Hi, so here we are talking about distributive loss in set theory. So in this particular video, we are going to learn the written proof of these two distributive laws, right? The first one says A union B and whole intersection C is actually equal to the union of A intersection C and B intersection C, right? So let me write down the first law. First law is A union B intersection C is equal to A intersection C union B intersection C. This is the first law and let's assume that X is an element of A union B intersection C, right? If X is an element of A union B intersection C, that means X is an element of A union B and X is also an element of C, right? If X is both in A union B and C, then only it can be there in their intersection. This part says X is an element of A union B, right? That means this X is either an element of A or this X is an element of B. If X is there in either of A or B, it will definitely be there in their union. And X is there in C. This comes from here. So from here we can say that X is an element of A and X is an element of C. Either this is true or X is an element of B and X is an element of C. That means one of these conditions are true because we know X is either an element of A or B or it can be there in both. That means either this is true that X is an element of A and X, X is an element of C or this condition is true where we are saying X is an element of B and X is an element of C. One of these conditions are definitely true. Both of them can also be true, right? So if this is true, from here we will get X is an element of A, A intersection C, right? If X is an element of both A and C, then X will definitely be an element of A intersection C. And from here, we can say that X is an element of B, B intersection C. But only one of these two conditions can be true or both of them can be true. So there will be this or in between them, right? So from here, we can say that X is an element of A intersection C union B intersection C. Yes, X is either an element of A intersection C or it is an element of B intersection C or it can be there in both of them if X is there in both A and B, right? Whatever may be the case, X will definitely be there in the union of A intersection C and B intersection C, right? And what is this? This is nothing but the right hand side of this distributive law, right? So, since X is an element of A union B intersection C, it will be an element of the union of A intersection C and B intersection C. So this is the written proof of the first distributive law. And after this, we are going to prove the second distributive law. So let me erase all this. And now we will try to prove the second distributive law. Let's assume that X is an element of A intersection B union C. Right? This is the left hand side. From here we can say that X is an element of A intersection B or X is an element of C. Right? Either one of these two conditions can be true or both of them can be true. Right? And if left one is true then X will be an element of A and X will also be an element of B. Right? And if right one is true then X will be an element of C. So only one of these two conditions are true. If left one is true that X is an element of A and X is an element of B, then from here we can say that X is an element of A or X is an element of C. This will be true and X will be an element of B or X is an element of C both of these conditions will be true. Since X is there in A intersection B, it will be there in A and it will be there in B. And if it is there in A and B both, it will definitely be there 
their union with any of the sets. That means X will be there in A union C and X will also be there in B union C. Right? And since X is there in both A union C and B union C, X will definitely be there in A union C intersection B union C. Right? Little confusing. Let me explain you once again. See, here we have assumed that X is an element of A intersection B union C. Then there will be two conditions. First is X is an element of A intersection B and X is not an element of C. And second condition can be X is not an element of A intersection B but X is an element of C. Right? Third condition can be X is there in both of them. If X is there in both of them, we don't have any problem. So we need not to take that condition. We are taking only these two conditions. So if we take first condition where X is there in A intersection B and it is not there in C, what will happen then? See, if X is there in A intersection B and not there in C, X will be an element of A intersection B and it will not be an element of C. This will be false and this will be correct, right? So if X is an element of A intersection B, that means it is there in both A and B. X will be there in A, it will also be there in B. And we are assuming that X is not there in C. If X is there in A and it is not there in C, then also X will be there in A union C because it is there in A, right? And similarly, if X is there in B, and it is not there in C, then also X will be there in B union C because it is there in B. So since X is there in both A union C and B union C, it will be there in their A intersection, right? This is the first condition. And then there can be second condition. What is that second condition? X is not there in A intersection B and it is there in C. Right? That means X is not there in A intersection B and it is there in C. So if X is not there in A intersection B, it will not be there either in A or in B or not there in both. But it is there in C. So even if it is not there in A and B, since it is there in C, it will definitely be there in A union C and B union C. The reason is it is there in C. Right? So it will definitely be there in A union C and B union C. And if it is there in A union C and B union C, it will be there in their intersection also. Right? So I think now this proof is clear to you. Right? So this was the written proof and we have visual proof also for these distributive laws. So keep watching MathSmart and bye bye till then.